Have you noticed how some ships have a rope ladder leading up the ship's side? Actually, pretty much every ship has one and they will use it pretty much every time they go in or out of port. We call it the pilot ladder and it's the way that most harbour pilots get on or off a ship at sea. When ships come into ports, there's often a requirement from the port authority for them to take a harbour pilot who has intimate knowledge of the local area. The idea is that the pilot supplements the bridge team with expert knowledge of things such as the way local currents will affect the vessel, how the local harbour towage providers work, the local response available in emergencies and things like that. I won't get into the legalities of whether the pilot or ship's captain is actually in charge of manoeuvring the ship because that does vary around the world as you may have noticed in some high profile cases recently. What we're interested in today however is how the pilot actually gets onto the ship. Nine times out of ten, they'll head out in the pilot boat and rendezvous with the ship a couple of miles offshore at the pilot station. The ship that they're meeting will steer a course that places any weather on the opposite side to that from which the pilot will board. So, if the pilot is boarding on the port side, they'll place the weather on the starboard side, usually somewhere on the starboard bow. The idea is that the sheer bulk of the ship provides shelter for the small pilot boat to come alongside, but also that the ship approaches the weather at such an angle so as to avoid rolling. This is where that rope ladder, the pilot ladder that we mentioned earlier, comes in. But before we get to that, let me just take a moment to thank this video's sponsor, Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering a box of awesome top shelf goods from under the radar brands. It's free to join and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Every month they introduce their members to cool new products based on a preference quiz they fill out. They've got awesome clothes, cool stuff for your house, camping and cooking gear, basically just high quality stuff in every category. 90% of the products come from small brands, many of which are based right in the US. For example, the Weekender box comes with this line of trade hardware and carry all, while the Wet box, designed for knife sharpening, comes with a set of three Arkansas oil stones, a non slip silicon base, premium honing oil, and a wood storage box. They now offer a new membership program where you can get really great deals all year round. I'm talking like 30% off or more sometimes, and it's totally free to join. You get to preview your member shipment before it's sent. You'll get a customised selection of products picked for you and before it's shipped you preview what's inside. Decide if you'd like to keep it, swap out the products or skip the month entirely for no charge. You only pay for what you want. To get a free mystery gift with your first membership purchase, click the link in the description and enter casual gift at the checkout or go to bespokepost.com slash casual gift. Anyway, back to our video where we were just about to talk about the ship's pilot ladder. It will be rigged on the leeward side in a position where the pilot boat can approach and rest alongside ready for the pilot to climb aboard. The thing is, as you may have guessed at the beginning of the video, the pilot ladder is essentially a rope ladder which means that the crew need to rig and retrieve it every time a pilot boards and store it away so that it remains in good condition. As such, the pilot is very much at the mercy of the seamanship skills of the visiting vessel's crew and the procedures put in place by its operators. According to the American Club, harbour pilots experience an average of two to three fatalities per year as a result of transfer accidents, a shockingly high number for such a niche profession. The thing is, it's not actually that complicated to properly rig a ladder and there are a boatload of resources available that tell you how to do it right. I'm intentionally not going to tell you what the regulations say because if you need to know that then you must go and read them yourself. Instead, we can interpret them in an easy to understand way which can be a useful way of checking that it has indeed been done right. Firstly, the ladder needs to come from a legitimate manufacturer. The requirements actually say that the manufacturer needs to certify the ladder as compliant, so you have to trust that they are reliable. That simple step deals with pretty much all of the technical requirements such as construction materials, rope dimensions, step spacing ladder markings and all that sort of stuff. From there, you just need to make sure it remains in good condition. It's really not complicated. Don't paint it, don't leave it wet, don't leave it in the sun and all those common sense things. Obviously, it will deteriorate over time, so just keep an eye on it and replace it when needed. A common early sign that I often notice is that the steps become loose. Each step is fixed in place between the two parallel side ropes with winnets filling in the gaps and the ropes joined with seizings. As the ladder wears, the gaps open up and the winnets become loose. Eventually, they may even fall out, which can lead to the steps no longer sitting parallel and unexpected loads being applied to the ropes and lashings. Again, just keep an eye on the ladder and if it's not in tip-top condition, don't hang it over the side and ask someone to climb it. Next, now that we know the ladder is all good, we can take a look at attaching it to the ship. Again, common sense goes a long way. You want to attach it to a strong point which maintains the strength of the ladder. Those side ropes are pretty strong, so don't go and fix it to a flimsy railing which may have rust hiding under the paintwork. Attach it to a load-bearing point on deck, using a fixing method that is at least as strong as the ladder itself. 
you could tie the ends of the ladder to the strong point or use a rolling hitch from another line that is just as strong. What I've seen quite a lot, however, is a shackle over the side ropes, effectively using a step as a stopper. On first glance, it looks okay. I mean, no official regulation says don't do this, but let's look at the forces at play and see why it's such a bad idea. The part that's holding the full weight of the ladder is the seizings just here, holding the ropes together, which is providing the friction to stop the step from sliding up the ladder. You also have the step itself, subject to an upward force far greater than the weight of a single pilot for which it was designed. Remember what I said earlier that the most common wear that I see is due to loose steps and winnets? Those can be a direct result of securing the ladder incorrectly using shackles. Anyway, we should now have a properly manufactured ladder with an appropriate way of securing it to the deck, so we can now look at the side of the ship. You want the ladder to rest flat against the side, with the bottom steps above the water and the overall length giving a climb of less than 9 metres. If it's higher than that, the ship will need to rig an accommodation ladder as well as the pilot ladder, which we'll get to in a minute. Assuming it's less than 9 metres, you just want to make sure that all the steps are level and that any climb is unobstructed by things like rubbing strakes and hull protrusions. If you're using a retrieval line, it needs to be attached above the last spreader and should lead forward on the ship. Again, the reasoning has a certain amount of logic. You don't want the line so low that it can get tangled in the legs of a pilot, and you don't want it leading aft, because that is the direction from which the pilot boat will approach. If you need to retrieve the ladder, you can retrieve it away from the pilot boat, rather than towards it. Anyway, back to the accommodation ladder that we mentioned a few seconds ago. If the climb is going to be more than 9 metres, a combination arrangement of the pilot ladder and accommodation ladder must be used. Again, some things are taken out of your hands by the shipbuilder, so day to day you don't need to remember things like the ladder needing to lead aft because it offers more protection to the user. The main things are just to make sure that the base of the accommodation ladder is at least 5 metres above the water to give plenty of space for the pilot boat underneath. Then, ensure the bottom platform is flat and that the accommodation ladder is not too steep. Maximum of 45 degrees here, but again, your common sense should kick in because beyond that, it'll feel more like a ladder than a staircase. To stop it swinging about, make sure it's secured to the ship's side. Again, I don't really need to explain that this stops it from swinging about because that should be common sense. How about the transition between the ladder and the platform? Well, again, you don't want the ladder to swing about, so it needs to be secured to the ship's hull one and a half metres above the platform, and you want enough ladder to actually hold on to, so that should extend two metres above the platform to cover all potential pilot heights. Finally, we get to the last arrangement, which at first glance has been developed with good intentions, but when you look closer, can be lethal. The trap door. With this, there's a trap door built into the bottom platform of the ladder, so that in theory, you can climb through the trap door and are surrounded by handrails and ready to step onto the ship. Unfortunately, some of them have been built with minimum in-depth thought about the practicalities of their use. The door should open in such a way as it doesn't hinder the user, so either backwards or outboard. The ladder protruding through the door should still rest against the hull and extend up to the height of the handrail. Again, it's logical because you want to be able to climb to a point where you can step off rather than having to hoist yourself up. Just as with the non-trap door version, you also don't want the ladder swinging around so it should be secured to the ship's hull one and a half metres above the platform. As you can see, everything to do with pilot ladders and boarding arrangements does make sense and is logical, but we still see so many examples of it being done wrong. Uneven steps, incorrect retrieval line, ladder tied to the ship's railings, and the list goes on. All I will say is that this video is intended only to give you a quick general overview for raising general awareness. If you're actually involved in rigging or using pilot ladders, you really need to make yourself aware of all the requirements and ensure you get it right every time. Your pilot's life literally depends on it.